I'd say I, I mentioned a lot of our current work is to do with surfaces. Um, so, so the interesting thing about a fluid is almost everything that you think about that's processed in industry is processed as a fluid. Um, even if you think you process a powder, powders when they flow, um, the flow of powders is what we would call granular flow or powder rheology. So even if you process something like that, it still flows. Um, uh, whether you heat something, melt it, whether you pressurize it and cast it, it's always processed in a liquid state. So, uh, so fluid mechanics play shows up everywhere in processing things. But the other thing is typically, unless you're dealing with things in microgravity, uh, then you also have to bound it. You have to put it in something. You have to put it in a, a surface or in a pipe or force it through a nozzle. And so interfaces is another great area of current interest, is how can I engineer an interface to control the flow of something. And in the past, people haven't been able to control that as well. One of the amazing things in the last decade is that interfacial engineering has become something we can do systematically. So you can pattern something, you can grow carbon nanotubes off a surface, you can micro-machine a surface, you can lithographically pattern a surface. And by changing the surface, you can actually quite dramatically change uh, the flow properties or the pressure drop flow rate relationship. So, so broadly, you might call that interfacial engineering, uh, and it's an area that MIT is extremely good at, not just myself, but a number of colleagues in mechanical engineering here also work in that area. Um, you know, in the past, everybody either studied solid mechanics or studied fluid mechanics, but, but interfaces where um, air meets water or where water meets a solid, um, and the fact that now in engineering we can systematically modify that means that uh, kind of the classical what's called a boundary condition. The idea that um, at a solid, where a liquid meets a solid, uh, no flow happens. We can start to actually control that, um, either by changing the chemistry or the physics, uh, or typically a combination of both. And so there are many people at MIT who are very good at making slippery surfaces, or surfaces that reduce friction, or surfaces that can have different frictions in one direction or another. Um, and these are things that, of course, nature has known how to do for many years. So, um, a feather um, is a great example of a surface that traps an insulating air layer. Um, it turns out to be pretty good at being water repellent. It turns out to have very different friction if you stroke it in one direction or another. All those are things that not just me, but my colleagues in mechanical engineering are all figuring out how to play with and systematically modify that. Good example is that nature didn't bother making ducks oil repellent. They didn't need to, but of course that everyone's seen pictures of a, uh, of a, of a waterfowl or something like that in an oil slick, and it's a, a disaster because nature didn't design that kind of structure to be oil repellent, and that's because the interfacial properties of oil are very different than the interfacial properties of water. So, so we've spent some time thinking about how, how to understand how to change the chemistry or how to change the boundary condition on something like a feather or a fabric uh, to make it more resistant to uh, water, not just water, but also oil, um, jet fuel, um, other materials like that. Things that typically if you spill oil on your trousers, you kind of know that the first thing that happens is it tends to suck uh, the oil in. So how can you change that? We've done that for fingerprints. Uh, we tend to be very greasy people. Anyone who's put their fingerprint on a touch screen knows that you leave a residue behind. So how can you control that? Um, that's an example of something called oleophobicity, um, repellency to oils. And that's another area that we've worked in.